Welcome to Geopolitics Universe. In today's video I will be discussing and explaining Brazil's new economic strategy that will destroy the US economy and how Russia will be involved in that. But first, I would just like to welcome you to Geopolitics Universe, this is a channel where we share the latest news, rumors, and insights into all things on geopolitics. You'll be able to find news surrounding all things to do with geopolitics. I would really appreciate it if you could please like and subscribe, also I just wanted to announce as we are a new channel which is growing by the day, we will be launching a giveaway for a $50 Amazon gift card. All you have to do to enter is like and subscribe. The giveaway winner will be announced in due course. Now let's carry on with the video. US-led sanctions on Russia are a political mistake that increases the risk of a nuclear war, according to a top foreign policy advisor to Brazil's presidential winner Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. Celso Amorim, who led Brazil's foreign ministry during Lula's two terms in office, warned of the dangers of isolating an economy, as big and strategic, as Russia's, explaining why the leftist former president wouldn't endorse such diplomatic positions if elected in October. For the first time since the Cuban Missile Crisis we see articles about the risk of nuclear weapons published on a weekly basis, he said during an interview in Sao Paulo this week. It's irresponsible not to seek peace. Nearly six months after President Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, the conflict is bogged down in the east of the country. Members of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization continue to send weapons to Kyiv and to impose major sanctions on Russia's $1.7 trillion economy. In May, Lula caused controversy when telling Time magazine that Ukraine's Volodymyr Zelensky and US's Joe Biden share part of the blame for the war as he believes both leaders failed to negotiate more with Moscow. Amorim, 80, now sees nuclear weapons as a threat as tangible as those posed by the climate, inequality and the pandemic. Sanctions are also strengthening ties between Moscow and Beijing, Amorim added. I have nothing against China. We're all part of the BRICS, but I can't understand the interest of the US in strengthening the China-Russia relationship," Amorim said, referring to the group of major emerging market economies that include Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Lula, if elected, could take a leading role in global peace talks, Amorim said, signaling that Brazil would resume its long-standing external policy of neutrality and peaceful resolution of conflicts under the leftist leader. In Latin America, Lula would reorganize the Mercosur bloc with Argentina, Paraguay and Uruguay, while re-establishing normal diplomatic relations with Venezuela, just like President-elect Gustavo Petro is poised to do in Colombia. How can we have a program for the Amazon rainforest without Venezuela? He said. Having diplomatic relations doesn't mean approving of a government. That would mark a departure from some of the foreign policies adopted by President Jair Bolsonaro. While the incumbent has also maintained a neutral position on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, he joined the US and a dozen of other countries in refusing to recognize Nicolas Maduro as Venezuela's president. One of Lula's biggest challenges, however, would be to rebuild Brazil's image abroad after it was tarnished by Bolsonaro's controversial positions on the environment, Amorim said. That would require not only words but concrete gestures, such as nominating special envoys able to hold discussions on the environmental agenda with high-level government officials and heads of state, he said. Also under consideration, he added, is a possible letter from Lula to global leaders detailing Brazil's commitments to topics that are dear to the international community, including climate, deforestation and indigenous rights. Asked whether he would be ready for another high-profile job in a possible Lula administration, Amorim said he'll never refuse to respond to a request from Lula, but that this isn't the moment for such a discussion. In other news to do with this, Brazil is Russia's main trading partner in Latin America. Both countries cooperate in robotics, chemical industry, among others. Can this factor explain the fact that Brazil has not voted against Russia in the UN Assembly? Just a little bit of context for starting. Brazil and Russia have this commercial relationship of about US$5 billion United States dollars per year. Just to put it in perspective, Brazil and China, we have $125 billion US per year. So the commercial cooperation between Brazil and Russia is not what's relevant for the matter. Brazil has a long tradition of standing for peaceful negotiations and standing against sanctions, so I think it was pretty clear from the very start, from the very beginning, that Brazil would not take sides in this war between Russia and Ukraine, and pledging and fighting for peaceful negotiations. So we don't see any reason why Brazil would vote for Russia. I don't think that Brazil's relationship with Russia has any sort of influence on this position that we took in the United Nations. 
Lula said, he, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, wanted war. He would have negotiated a little more if he didn't want war. That's how it is. I criticized, Russian President Vladimir Putin when I was in Mexico City, saying it was a mistake to invade. But I don't think anyone is contributing to peace. People are stimulating hatred against Putin. That is not going to solve it. You have to stimulate an agreement, but there is encouragement, to confront. Sometimes I see the president of Ukraine on TV as if he's celebrating, being given a standing ovation by all the parliaments, you know? That guy is as responsible as Putin. He's as responsible as Putin. Biden could say, let's talk some more. We don't want Ukraine in NATO, period. It's not a concession. In early September, Lula said that if he wins the election, he intends to talk with Russia and Ukraine about ending the conflict. If we win and the war is not over, we will talk with them and tell them that war is of no interest to anyone, only to arms sellers, and we want to sell culture, books, food to humanity. In April, he had already said during an event at the State University of Rio de Janeiro, UERJ, that Brazil would be a better negotiator and that peace could be reached at a bar table, which caused uneasiness in the diplomatic representation of Ukraine in Brazil. Who is interested in this war? From everything I understand, read and hear here in Brazil, this war would be solved at a table drinking beer. If not at first, at the second, if not at the third, it would continue until the bottles run out for a peace agreement. This shows that Lula sides with Russia and Joe Biden which is bad news for the United States of America and Joe Biden. Also, Brazil and Russia are tightening energy relations amid the geopolitical turbulence and energy insecurity associated with the latter's invasion of Ukraine. At the end of September, Brazilian nuclear energy company ENB Par and Russia's Rosatom signed an MO to facilitate conversations and actions on technology transfer for the formation of a cluster of companies providing nuclear sector services and supplies, and for the operation, repair, and modernization of hydroelectric plants. The MO also allows Rosatom and ENB Par to expand the promotion of their areas of activity. According to Nathan Agarchez, a PhD student with the Santiago Dantes graduate program and focused on energy geopolitics in the Caspian Sea, said it makes sense for Russia to seek closer ties with Brazil. They are looking for other markets, diversifying, in view of their drastic reduction in oil and gas exports to Europe, she told Ben Americas. Any pragmatic government in Brazil, on the other hand, would take advantage and try to close cheaper contracts with another supplier. And this is believed Lula will do. Thanks so much for watching till the end. Please like, comment and subscribe and turn the notification bell on so you never miss a video. I would really appreciate it if you do this as it really helps support the channel. On this channel we share the latest news, rumors, and insights into all things on geopolitics. You'll be able to find news surrounding all things to do with geopolitics around the world and more. Until next time, see you later.